Hey guys, Mark Fresh, Protect Dog Training. We don't have a mic because we're in the trailer, so it should be quiet enough. I'm gonna click on. Good, good. And what I'm doing with with uh, Duque right now is because his owner did a lot of the imprint from a baby till five months of age. Remember, Duque didn't get to me until five months of age. So he's learned some behaviors based on his relationship with his owners. Cushet, good that we want to make sure we address right now. And if you guys have heard me talking about Bane, Bane's that aggressive Dutch Shepherd. And I've been working him through some things, but his owner never really addressed it with Bane, addressed the um, dog's body. And it's real important as a baby, as a puppy, that you work with his mouth. Nope. Good. And his paws, teaching him that you can touch anything. And he's a little excited right now because he just came out of the kennel. Normally, I might want to let him totally settle down and be in a different state of mind before I started doing this. So, um, he's into the food, though, so we'll go ahead and work with that. And what I want to do is just desensitize him and start teaching him that protest behavior is not allowed. What I mean by protest behavior is when a dog will mouth tell you they don't want you to do something and it's subtle and people don't realize that this is protest behavior that can grow into being a maiden. He's basically telling you he doesn't want you messing with him, all right? Good boy, good boy you got, huh? What do you got? Good boy, good. So this can be done a million different ways, but remember we've built up our communication base for he knows what no, good, and yes is now. We have that to work with. I've got a, a pinch on him, so I can bring my correction up to, to a level that he respects, whatever that may be. I want to put this away because I don't want him being distracted by this, so I'm going to put this somewhere where he can't get to it. All right, come here. Good boy. And then what I want to do is I want to start doing things like touching his paws. Nope. Good. Good. Nope. He's into the food. That's a good thing. Yep. But uh, I want him to be totally relaxed. And I'm just messing with the floor. This is just desensing. No. Good. And so the mouthing. He went over and tried to mouth on my hand right then. That's what I'm talking about with protest behavior. They'll do a thousand and one things. They'll throw their body at you. There'll be a, a little bit of a pain in the ass. That precocious behavior you keep hearing me talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And if you let this stuff grow where you don't address it and don't totally get him used to handling his paws, and no. Quit. No. What I say? No. Good. Good. There you go. And there's the protest behavior. You'll try any way possible to get you to stop doing what you're doing. So you've got a good boy. Good. There you go. Nope. Good. That's my boy. Good. Yes. Good boy. And then you just keep building on this, right? Slow but sure. You got to try to catch him in the right frame of mind. Uh, when he's quiet, maybe after Ben, he just came out of the kennel. But I'm trying to get a point across to you that this stuff is important. You should be able to touch your dog's ears. Good boy, good. Good, there you go. Come here. Grab his ears, mess with his ears, good. Yes, good boy, good. And, and the more you do this, pretty soon he'll get very accepting of it and he'll hold, he'll wait. Nope. I want the foods being a distractor, so I wanna pull that out of there. And again, this is all fluid. I'm just coming up with this stuff as I go along, but my goal is to, good. Good, good, nope, easy, hey, good boy, good, yep, okay, good, and you use your markers, good is a duration marker, right, it's the same thing here, it's saying, you got to keep doing this until I say the word yep, which is his release, right, nope, good, nope, here, good boy, good, good, yep, okay, the more you do that, he's starting to understand that he's got to wait, the good marker will become prevalent because he, he understands it so much now. The more you do this, here's another place to use your duration marker. Good, good. Yep. Good boy, okay? So I'm starting with the ears because he's most accepting of the ears, right? Good, good. Yep. So I'm setting a time level. How long am I holding his mouth? How long am I holding his ears? This right here is the easiest one for him, the ears. So then I go to the mouth. And then I go to the paws. He doesn't seem like he wants his paws messed with as much. But I'll set the pattern of what I'm asking of him, which is to, to hold, to, to allow me to hold that and mess with whatever extremity it is. And then there's a time level, and then there's a yep. If he protests, I'm kind of putting some correction in there. I'm trying to work him through it, right? So, but the, when you start doing this over time, now get to the paws. No. 
You think this is play behavior, and it is. It's play behavior, but it's also protest behavior. No. Good, good. There you go. Good boy. So you've got to set your parameters, set your um, limitations on what you accept. No. Ah. Uh, and what you will put up with. Because if you let this dog just keep doing this to you, this is his way of, of saying that he's over the top of you, right? Now, in relationship, I've been coming down real heavy on Bane. He's a two-year-old dog that's learned to bite since he's been a puppy. He's doing nothing but bite work. He's, he's got a propensity to already bite. He's already bit his owner four times. So I am our dynamic within my relationship dynamic with, with Bane is that you got to let me do this, and I have a muzzle on him, and I'm putting him through. I'm basically flooding the dog. I'm, I'm saying you have to put up with this whether you like it or not, and my dominance is a lot harder. So with a puppy, we don't have to do that. He doesn't know any difference, no. He's just being a precocious little turd because he knows no different. This is a driving little puppy. So we have to sit our limits, and then you can do this five minutes here, ten minutes there. Uh, don't have to do it every day. You don't have to kill the world in one day, but you slowly build up to this. You slowly tighten down the screw on what you're expecting him to be able to put up with you put and handling him, right? Come on. Good boy. Good. Yep. Good boy. Good. All right. Come on. Good boy. Good. 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 Yep. Good boy. Good. Good. Yep. There's a time level there. How long am I doing it? It's the same. Now I can take that time level from here into his, his face, and then he'll start to... Good, good, nope, good, 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 yep, good boy, good, and that's all it is, it's basically you doing something to him that he may not like, and he'll start protesting, right, so we're trying to teach him that he has to put up with it, you do it just a little bit of a time level, say yep, and then you can build on it, I've got my ears now in my mouth, his paws are having a lot more, it's harder for him to accept his paws being touched, so I will go to that, maybe the next session, I'll start with the ears, go to the teeth, then go to the paws, and then I'll keep keep working. This mouthing is not good. No. You understand me? Good. All these little behaviors he's giving are puppy behaviors, yes. But they're also, they can manifest over time if you don't curb it and teach him what you expect or not. You're going to end up with a dog that ends up being like Bane if you let him get to that point. I'm not saying he's that way, but you get my point. That you can let a dog like this grow into a monster if you don't have a proper relationship dynamic. Here we come back to that same subject, right? Real important. Good boy, good. And these are the sort of things, the relationship dynamic that you have with your dog that are important. I can play with him. I can let him be a dog. But there are certain limits that I will let. And, and you're aware of that this is protest behavior that he's throwing at you. And if you let him get away with that, it could manifest into becoming a problem. You have to get him to understand when you allow it, when you don't, and set up limitations. Get, 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 get. Oh, good boy, good boy. So now I'm going to let him play and we're over with, right? So just, it's real important. And then you should be taking your dog down to the vet and letting your, your vet handle it. And again, little five-minute sessions. Let you ask your vet if you can come in. Do they mind that you just want a wellness check real quick and, and with no negative? And the vet does the same kind of thing. Show them what you've done and, and how you've built this whole body touching up to a point where... Now the vet could come in, the vet could go like this and do the same thing. Yep, good boy, and the dog will accept it, right? He seems to be very accepting of me touching his ears. That's where we're going to start. Then the mouth was a little bit better, but he doesn't like his paws messed with. So we'll, we'll build on this. This will become a, a normal routine, a regular pattern, until we get this dog so accustomed to having me touch him, feel him, anything I want to do with him, he should accept me doing, okay? And if he doesn't, we have a problem. And some of it is is in relationship to our relationship dynamic in regards to me being dominant over him. These little things are very subtle, yes. I don't need, when I say the word dominance, it doesn't mean that I need to put the hammer down and come down on the dog. It's what I expect of him in a thousand and one different little ways. I go through the door first. He's not allowed to break that door first. He has to wait for me with impulse control until I tell him hop into the crate. He has to wait at the kennel door. When I open that kennel door, if he breaks, I slam the door in his face. Nope. Good. Impulse control is built in from a young age, right? All these little thousand and one little areas that say that I'm the dominant force in your life. You don't get to just do what you want to. you got to look at my direction. And over time, that builds into a very solid relationship, right? That's what you want. It's all about relationship dynamic, right? All right. Mark Farashi, Protect Dog Training, signing off. Have a good day, guys. Good boy. Good boy.